Welcome to the No Paleta Podcast, a place where I share the journey of building my company from the ground up, as well as the stories of others in our community. I am your host, Sandra Velasquez, founder of No Paleta, a culture forward brand that celebrates and elevates culture. Aside from making great products, we are cultural storytellers with a mission to inspire our community to stand in their worth. In this podcast, you will hear a mix of solo and guest episodes around the entrepreneurial realities of building a company. I launched No Paleta from my Brooklyn apartment with no outside funding while working three jobs, raising my child in the middle of the pandemic at the age of 44. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope it inspires you to live boldly. Nikita Charuza was a fashion and beauty editor for over a decade before founding Squigs, a hair care brand rooted in Ayurveda whose mission of happy head care was created to put you in a good mood. It is one of my favorite things to talk to other founders who are building cultural centric brands and that's exactly what Nikita is doing. Her personality shines through and really comes through in the brand which you'll hear in this conversation. She was inspired by traditional Ayurvedic Indian hair oiling and the products that were a big part of her childhood. So for those of you that are out there wondering if you can build a brand around your cultural traditions, the answer is yes. And you can also make it fun. Hey, Nikita, how are you? Hi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so, so, so honored. I can't wait to hear about what's going on. I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time and I'm sure so much has happened since we last (laughs) got to hang out in those accelerator rooms, you know, Zoom rooms together. But I want to start at the beginning. And can you just tell me about like when you had the idea for Squigs, you have such a fun brand. When you had the idea, what was the first thing that you did? Yeah, so I love that question. It was actually, I feel like an idea that was brewing for a while. So I was a fashion and beauty editor for the past 10 years. And, you know, I had the amazing opportunity to try out so many beauty products, talk to so many dermatologists and talk to so many awesome brand founders too. And I think the more I continued to do that, I just had this like idea in the back of my head that was brewing and brewing. But obviously I'm like, who am I to create a brand? Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) So it started about, I would say like four and a half years ago where I found myself keep going back to these ancient Ayurvedic rituals that we would do when we were younger. And I found myself, especially as I was continuing to grow up, become reinvested in my culture, because I think that's another story arc that I could really go into. But um, yes, I'd love to dive into that. Yeah. So I think as I was starting to figure out who I was as a person, I found myself going back to those ancient Ayurvedic traditions, like hair oiling, creating DIY face masks and things like that, that I would do with my great grandmother and my grandmother. And I think that's when the idea really started to spark like, hey, why isn't this a bigger thing within the beauty industry? And also, why can't I create something that kind of felt like it was more for my generation and generations to come where it felt like a little bit more modern and show like, hey, you can still have fun and Ayurveda can be approachable and it doesn't have to be necessarily like your grandmother's and mother's aesthetic, I would say, like look wise too, but just still have those really amazing Ayurvedic ingredients and still call out your heritage in a really amazing way, but still have fun with it. And I think that's when the idea just kept brewing. And I think the more I continued to write about different brands, the more I kind of also got jaded, I think, to be completely honest with the concept of beauty and you know what perfection looks like because here I am as an editor like typing like this is the best blah 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 in the world and I think I kind of just got like jaded by the whole process a little bit I think in my last position too we did a really great job of like listen let's cut out the hyperbole let's take a step back let's make sure we're vetting all of these products properly if we're saying like this is the best for xyz skin tone xyz skin type we're taking the time and like really testing it out for a month two months things like that so I think the more we really dive deeper into that, the more I'm like, okay, there's definitely something here that I can do to not only honor my heritage, but show people like you can still have fun with things too. I love that. And you have this amazing experience that is not usual for beauty brand founders where you were a beauty editor for a decade, right? As you said, Mm -hmm. can you tell me about what you have seen, like how the beauty industry has changed over that course of the decade in terms of just everything? Just love to hear like your take on that. 
Yeah. So like when I first started out, I was like at a bunch of different companies like L India, L Dubai, things like that before landing my job at Pop Sugar, where I mainly first focused on fashion. And then I found myself like really pestering the beauty team like, hey, I saw this product come out. I'd love to try it. I'd love to review it. I'd love to do all these interviews. And then that's kind of like how my love for beauty evolved. And I really do feel like fashion and beauty are so correlated. And I think throughout the years, as I saw so many brands come to play, I found myself really gravitating towards the one that really had an authentic mission behind it, an authentic founder story, because I think we were all in a time where like, okay, listen, like we all love the Bella and Gigi Hadids of the world, but not everyone looks like that. And it's unrealistic to be like, hey, this is what you have to look like to be quote unquote, perfect and live in this world. And I think that's when I kind of started finding myself digging for those stories in fashion, in beauty. And I think that's when I was like, okay, I kind of made it my mission, I think, within like the last four years of my role to really dive deeper into that and be like, how can I help uplift these founders, these designers, these beauty brand founders? Because a lot of their stories weren't even getting highlighted at the time. And this was before like, you know, AAPI month was like a big month or Hispanic Heritage Month was a big month. And it was before all of this like movement really started to happen. And I just made it my internal mission of like, okay, when I first started, I was literally the only brown editor. I felt like I loved being able to have the opportunity to go to all of these amazing shows, talk to all these celebrities, things like that. But I always kind of felt isolated. And then that really changed my perception of beauty too, because I'm like, oh, damn, is this what I'm supposed to look like? You know, when I'm going to these fashion shows, when I'm going backstage, checking out all this stuff, like, is this who I'm supposed to be? And, you know, I just always kind of felt that isolation of like, wow, okay, I don't know if this is uh, like, am I allowed to be here? (laughs) Kind of almost. Um, So I think that's when I really started to dig deeper into finding all these different brands and all these founders, because I was like, why aren't more people highlighting this? Like, listen, like we talk about the L'Oreal's of the world all day long, but why not highlight someone's brand like yourself, for example, that comes rooted from like your heritage. There's a mission behind it. There's a person behind it who you can really like vouch for. Like, like I was telling you before we started, like every time I see one of your wins, I'm literally sitting here like clapping through my phone. And like, I think that's what people really resonate with. And I think that's the shift we're definitely seeing between beauty brands for sure, especially as new ones pop up, because I think unless they have that authentic mission or their North star, I really don't think people are going to connect with it because like they'll just move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And they'll sure you may get momentum in the start, but I don't think it's going to be lasting for a very long time. A hundred percent. It's so interesting how quickly things change, right? Because (laughs) I mean, if we could go back in time and time machine to when you started your career as a beauty editor and what the landscape looked like then, Yes. And then compared to what it looks like now, it's so different. There is so much invested in the founder and the story and the and the mission and the values of brands now because of the transparency that social media provides us, right? It used mm-hmm. to be that we didn't know who was the founder of any brand, right? Like yeah, we, just, no. we just bought the products, we saw the commercials, we read about it in magazines. So it's interesting that you highlight that. But tell me now, like from a production standpoint, because you were a beauty mm-hmm. editor, What did you know about actually making physical products? Like, how did you get it made, right? Yeah, yeah. So That part, like, what were those first steps like? So I think for me, the first step was just kind of thinking about the concept itself. And I'm like, to distill it completely, it was how can we make Ayurveda feel fun? And how can we make Ayurveda feel like for someone like me who didn't feel Indian enough, who didn't feel American enough, who was kind of like the first generation kid who's like, I don't know where I really land over here. So I think that's where it really started for me of seeing like, is there even a space for this? And I think even as I saw other hair oiling brands and stuff come to play, I still continue to write about them. I still continue to champion them because I truly believe there should be enough space for us at the table. And right now, there's not even enough brands for us to really make a huge splash and a huge movement. And I honestly feel like there's a lot more chance for all of us to succeed if we all just help uplift. And I think sometimes, especially between the beauty and the fashion space, it gets very gatekeepery. And I get it. It's because we were always told there can only be one of us within this space. So it's kind of like an unlearning we all have to do. So when I was first starting out, it was just thinking about like the overall concept, like, okay, I love hair oiling. My hair is a huge part of my identity. When I started suffering from postpartum hair loss, I felt devastated. I didn't know what to do, but then I found myself keep going back to those same rituals that we were doing while we were growing up. And I think that's what really stuck 
to me. And another thing I would just say is Google is your best friend. Like I don't even know how to explain this, but there were so many nights where I was literally under my covers at 3am, literally just like Googling, what is a manufacturer? How does this work? Like, what do you do? Cause like, yes, I had the amazing opportunity to interview so many people and talk about their journeys and stuff like that. But it's such a different process on the back end when you're actually diving deep into it and thinking about the logistics. Yeah. So for me, it was just like Google became my best friend. I was just YouTubing everything, thinking about my past experiences, thinking about conversations I had with derms, with doctors, with founders, with everything. And just seeing like, hey, is this even a possibility for me? Because it was just very scary concept to be like, I'm leaving my job as an editor, which I worked so hard to get and so hard to prove my worth in this space and say, I belong here. And to take that and be like, okay, now I'm going to try to do something completely different. Let's try to see if it works. It's very scary. So I think it was just a lot of trial and error, a lot of Googling terms of like, I didn't even know what a PO meant. Like, (laughs) it's just like so many things like that, where you just kind of learn as it goes and not being afraid to ask for help. So like, there were so many times where if someone would say a word to me, that was a part of the manufacturing process that I had no idea, I would literally be like, I'm sorry, do you mind letting me know what this means? (laughs) Like, obviously, I'd Google it first. But like, it's okay to ask those questions, because I think that's really how you grow as a human. I think there's absolutely no harm in just letting the person know, like, this is new for me, I'm learning here. Like, yes, I could go on and on about ingredients, because that's like where my strong suit is. But the actual process part, it's okay to not know. And it's okay to just learn as you go and try to take baby steps rather than just jumping the gun and trying to do everything in one shot and then learning you made a huge mistake. Yeah, hundred percent. And I feel that part of my exhaustion at the end of each day is because my brain is exhausted from learning because I'm yes. constantly learning <laughs> new yes. things, new terms, new words. I'm like, what does that acronym mean? Can, yes. Can someone oh my God. The this acronyms. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so I love that. Yeah. Don't be ashamed or afraid to keep asking questions. No, everyone has to learn. Yeah. And in fact, when people ask questions, that to me is a signal that they're curious and they want to learn. That's actually mm-hmm. a good sign to me. Like when I have some younger team members on my team and if they don't ask questions, I'm like, hello? Did you get it? Do you, like, <laughs> yeah. Do you, yeah. <laughs> like, if you're not asking questions, it tells me that you're not listening. You're not interested. You're not learning. All of us yeah. are learning all the time. So When did you know, here's a question that people always ask me and I'm going to ask you, when did you know it was time to quit your job? Yeah, that was honestly, like I said, something I really struggled with. Like I'm still freelancing, but even that's like maybe an article a month or every two months, because I just truly feel like the editor in me will never die. But it was such a hard experience because I literally grew up being like, I'm going to be a fashion editor. I'm going to be in this space forever. And like, I grew up in the times of like the hills, Laguna Beach, things like that, where it was just so like, wow, this is a part of your world. Like you can actually have this be a part of your world. And I never thought that could exist. And of course, I never saw anyone who was brown within the space. So I'm like, maybe I can pioneer that. And maybe I can push that forward. So it was very hard for me to take a step back. And I think personally, I quit, I want to say May of last year. And I had a really tough birthing experience also. So I was just going through a lot of health issues. I was mentally just drained from working really hard, working a lot of weekends, things like that. And I think especially after everything I went through with my daughter, Selena, and just being so grateful to be alive, be okay, and just be happy. And I think that's also like our core mission of Squigs is just be happy. And like, I just wanted to exude happiness. And I think That's for me when I had that moment of life is too freaking short, like it can be taken away from you in a second. And it almost was. And that's the point for me where I decided to be like, okay, I'm going to put my mental health forward. I haven't, I truly hadn't for the past how many ever years of my career. I was just so like, I want to make this work. This is my dream job. I need to make this work. And I kind of not going to lie. I felt like I'd be a failure if I couldn't do it all because you see people juggling so many things and they're like, oh yeah, I didn't leave until, you know, two years in when blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, that's not me. (laughs) I really believed in Squigs' mission of happy head care. I believed in like the mission we were trying to push forward. And when we saw a little bit of traction, I'm like, okay, I'd be really stupid if I didn't take this chance. Like this is literally the universe giving me a sign. Don't be scared. Take the chance. If it all fails tomorrow, hey, at least you tried it. But that was kind of like my point for me. I think when I came back from maternity leave, after all the health issues I was going through, 
I think it's just kind of like a big wake up call for me to be like, okay, you need to put your happiness first. You need to put yourself forward. And that's when I decided to take the leap and do squigs full time. It's beautiful. And let's talk about your traction. Let's talk about like what's (laughs) happened, what's transpired since you launched. Yeah. I mean, it's honestly been such an incredible experience and I'll be the first to say, I didn't expect to get the traction that we did. Yes, I come from an editorial background, but that's exactly why I knew how hard it would be to prove your point because editors literally get tens and thousands of emails a day about new brands, about new designers, about new products, whatever it is. So that's why I'm like, okay, in my head, I've had a little bit of that negativity creeping back in being like, why me? Why should people care about like my heritage, what I did while growing up, you know? So I was a little bit hesitant at first, but I think the more I started telling people about our mission of happy head care, which is our comprehensive approach for taking care of the skin on your face and your scalp, because both are equally as important. And because of our beliefs of happy head care, we give a percentage of proceeds to mental health charities. Because again, like I mentioned, mental health is just something I take so seriously, especially after being burned out, going through all the things I've personally gone through. I was like, how can I sit here, put something more into this universe of like, this is beauty and like not have anything to back that and like give back. I wish I was a therapist. I wish I could do more to help, but like, at least I'm trying something to give back in some way. So that's kind of how it started. And I think the more I started telling people about our mission, they were like, okay, cool. That makes sense. But then I think when I, they really tried the product, that's when people were like, oh, wow, this hair oil doesn't have any synthetic fragrances and it still smells so great and feels so great. And wow, like you have a biface face serum that doesn't have any synthetic dyes in it. I'm like, yes, it took three years to formulate and it's amazing. <laughs> so it's just like things like that, where I think when they actually tried the product, people started getting excited about the brand. And I think also because it just looked different from what was out there. Like when you look at Squigs, you don't necessarily think like, hey, this is a Ayurvedic South Asian owned brand. Like it just feels like something different. And I think that's when we really started getting traction. And then about a month later, we got picked up by Urban Outfitters, which was so, so, so exciting because I went to school in Drexel in Philly. So I basically lived at like the UO store. Um, So that was just like, like a pinch me moment. And then obviously like we met through like the Tower 28 program, which was so amazing. And I learned so much. I love Amy so freaking much. And I think that's just kind of like how it grew. I think people just started hearing about our story and they were like, oh, what is Squigs? What does that mean? And I'm like, let me tell you, it's a nickname. Me and my sister used to call each other while growing up. So I think that's kind of how we continue to grow. And then I think most recently we were chosen to be a part of Ulta Beauty's first accelerator program which was also just really exciting, I think, to be the only South Asian owned inspired brand, a part of that as well. And yeah, it's just been, it's weird to say, like, we literally just hit our year mark last week, which is crazy. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. So I think it's one of those things where I'm like, whoa, we did so much in a year, but also I'm sure like you feel the same of like, you're always like, what's next? What else do I have to do? And you kind of like, you forget about the wins. So I'm trying as much as I can to like be in the moment and like just experience every win, no matter how small it is, even if it's like a customer reaching out and being like, I love you guys or, you know, like, cause that like really makes your whole day and it makes all the tears and all the frustrations really worth it. So yeah, it's a long winded answer, but yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. And I can't believe you're only a year old for some reason. I yeah. thought you were a little older, but I love that. <laughs> I mean, you're a mom too. So you know that it's like every phase is precious, right? And then it's Literally. gone, right? It's like, it really. I'll never see my five-year-old daughter again because now she's Aww. 15, you know, right? I know. And so it's the same with your brand. Like I look back to like my problems when I was making the soap myself in my house and those mm-hmm. were different problems. Now I have new problems, right? <laughs> but yeah. I also have <laughs> new wins, new wins, right? So it is important yes. to continue to celebrate those wins. And I totally get that. Like when you get a great customer glowing review, who's just like in love with your brand, it totally makes your yeah, whole day, you know, it really and does. on the flip side of that, when you get a bad one, it can like ruin your oh. day too. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> you know, and that's a part of the yes. reality, but tell me a little bit more about like, who is your customer? Cause I love how fun your brand is. It's so intentional. Like the funness is about it is Yay. so intentional, <laughs> right? You see that when you go visit your website, when you look at your product and I love how you're trying, not trying, but you are like making Ayurveda just kind of like accessible to all, like fun to all. Right. And Mm -hmm. so 
like, do you have intel about like, who is your customer? Like, like are they all, yeah. you know, Southeast Asian? Like, or do you feel like it's already permeating? Yeah, it's so funny because dominant culture. Yeah, no, it's really, I think that's why I like love Shopify. And I love looking at all like the insights and everything, because it's truly so amazing that our customer base is honestly, it skews everywhere. It's not just South Asian men and women. I really thought I'm like, maybe in the start, maybe people will just your Ayurveda and they'd be scared and they would just be like, you know, one sector. But it's been really awesome because we've been seeing people who are in their teens. So like our, our main demo is Gen Z. But we also have a really strong millennial customer base, too, because I think what really comes through with our messaging, too, is the fact that you can have something that looks super cute, but also be effective. I think sometimes people see something that has really gorgeous packaging and they're like, oh, but is it actually efficacious? Does it actually have ingredients that works? Is the formula good? And I think that's something that's been something I've really been like holding on to to show the world like, hey, you can have something that looks cute as hell, but really be efficacious, too. And it's been really great to see both the Gen Z and millennial consumer base just really get it right off the bat. But honestly, like our customer base has been ranging from people who are like 17 to 18 to I've had people who are like in their 50s and 60s who have been dealing with hair issues or skin issues being like, wow, this product is really awesome. Like it's changed my life. And they're not really deterred from the fun factor, I would say which was a concern for me at first, but I'm like, I just really believed in what we were trying to do because I want everything from our name to our packaging, to our products to just evoke joy and happiness. And I think that's kind of like the full package of what Squigs is. So it's been really awesome to see like people of all different demos and ages really loving the product so far. I love that. I love the Shopify analytics, right? I love yes. like spying on like, where do people live? And stuff. <laughs> How have you funded this entire thing? Yeah. How have you gotten to this point? Because, you know, it takes a lot of money to make products, to make packaging, mm -hmm. to get testing. Like, mm -hmm. so how have you made it here to this point? Yeah, I'm completely bootstrapped right now. I'm super, super, super thankful that I have a family who supports me and believes in my mission and like the products. And I think that's because it's products we've been using while growing up. So they're like, yeah, I know it actually works. So I'd be the first to say if I didn't have the support from both my family, my husband, I wouldn't be able to do it. And that's just facts. And I'm the first one to say that. So I'm really proud, like we're bootstrapped. I'm trying literally as hard as I can to just be so mindful of everything that we've done. And that's why we haven't done anything huge marketing wise or, you know, any paid ads or anything like that. We just started literally two weeks ago trying to test things out because like I said, you know, I want to be super intentional with the finances that I have on hand because I don't have millions of dollars of investments at the moment. So I'm just trying to be super mindful of what are intentional things I can do to help get Squigs' mission out there and get people to try out the products and then hopefully grow from there. Yes. I mean, bootstrapped means different things to different people, but you know, it's the difference between having like millions of dollars in the bank yes, <laughs> um, and having to be very intentional with every dollar. So I remember that. That's also just my personality. I'm the first one to see something like sparkly and shiny and then you whatever. And I'm like, wow, I need to try that. But then I always have to like rein it in. And I think I get that from my dad because he started his own company. So I think seeing the entrepreneurship side from him and like seeing how we grew up where there was one point where it was like four of us living in one bedroom on one mattress, you know what I mean? So it was just, yeah. and then seeing how successful he's gotten today, I think that's been ingrained in me since day one. So I think that's something that will always be with me of being mindful, no matter how much money I have, because it's just something I think that's ingrained in me of like, you have to I think kind of be that way in order to run a business. Otherwise, you know, you'll just be throwing money left, right and center and you don't know where it lands, especially when you're first starting out. Yeah. And I mean, you're building a community of people, a community of followers, of believers, and that's the most important thing that you can do anyway. You know, people yes. that have a lot of money are trying to do that, right? With their money. Yes. And it, but you have a brand with a mission. And so that's beautiful. And so my last question is really just to ask you, like, what is your big, like the BHAG? What's the big, hairy, audacious goal? Like, where do you, if I call you in three years, like, where is Squigs? Yeah, I would just love to be with a retailer who gets our mission and what we're trying to do. And it's also just targeting the same, I call them our happy head care community. So like the same kind of people who are looking for products that are both like super cute, but super efficacious. And I think my goal in three years would be 
to be in one of those retailers that really helped make a splash, because I think especially as a small brand, that's like everyone's end goal. And we all know that like right now, D2C is such a, it changes on a daily basis. Uh, so I think for me, it would, we're all trying to keep up literally. <laughs> so I think for me, it would be definitely like being in a retailer space that gets what we're trying to do. And then also, I think just having a line of products that just makes sense because that's something also for me where I just want to be intentional with it. Cause like, I like to think of ourselves as slow beauty and that's just because of what Ayurveda is in itself. And I want to make sure with each product we're coming out, there's a purpose for it because the market is so, so, so saturated. So there's no point in just coming out with another vitamin C serum if it's the same and there's nothing different with it. And you know what I mean? So yeah, I think I just want to make sure that if I can look back and I think still feel that happiness that I feel when I look at it and try out the products and just have a community of people who feel the same, that's when I know it'll be a win for me. So I don't really have necessarily like milestones, like I need to be in an Ulta, Sephora, Target, and this or that. Like, obviously those are all amazing goals, but I think for me, it's more just like that internal feeling of like, wow, like I followed my dreams. I did it. I'm happy with what I've done. I think that's when I'll know I'm like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I, I love that. No, it makes so yeah. much sense. And I was just telling someone else the other day that, you know, for brands like ours, it seems like there are only three paths, Sephora, yes. Ulta, or Target. That's it, right? Yes. And, <laughs> and I'm like, but there are other brands that are not in any of those that are $100 million brands, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you can choose yourself. And really what you're saying, like what I'm hearing is that success is ultimately what you believe it is. Yeah, it really is. It's you choosing your vision over yeah. what everyone else is doing or, or what people tell you to do and, you know, the intentionality behind it. And you don't need to have 36 SKUs to be successful. No, you, know? you really don't. And I think that's what's so hard for people to understand sometimes. But it's like, that's why I just started with two and everyone's like, what, that's it? And I'm like, yeah, because that's all I need to get the idea of happy head care out there. Like, I don't need more. Mm -hmm. And also, at the time, I don't have the finances to do more. So I'm going to do with what I have. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. I know people ask me, like an investor asked me, well, why did you start with soap? And I'm like, because that's what I could make at my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's why. Well, thank you so much. I love, you really feel like the living embodiment of your brand because you are so <laughs> joyful and thank like, you. you are like happiness, right? You are. And that is oh. what your brand is. And it's, and I think that it comes across when the founder mirrors the brand, that's how you know that it's real, you know? Oh, you like made my day for saying that. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh. oh, and so I just want to ask you like a couple last minute, like fire around questions. Yeah. What is the best advice you have ever been given? That's really hard. I think I would say as cliche as it is, don't negate your gut. I think, especially for me, because I'm a solopreneur, sometimes I'll make a decision and then I'll like think about it and be like, wait, but is that the right decision? And try to get other people's opinions. My husband's probably sick of me being like, but what do you think about this? You know what I mean? But I think it's listen to your gut because you know your brand the most and you know it the best. And that's the hardest part where I feel like sometimes when you're in it by yourself, especially, sometimes you forget that because you hear all these outside voices being like, you should be doing this, but don't forget about this and also do this. So I think it's listening to your gut and also just like remembering to take a beat for yourself. Take a minute. If you have to just take a second, step away, go to the bathroom, lock the door for a second, take a few deep breaths, do whatever you have to do, listen to a song. Like sometimes I'll just like blast my favorite song, run around the room really fast and then be like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> so like do whatever you need to do to just get that piece of yourself and feel like you're at your hundred. Cause if you don't feel that way, things just keep piling on and you just get more and more like stressed out, I think. By the way, I'm a huge fan of hiding in the bathroom. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you really spoke to me with that one. I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom, but I don't really, but I just go in there just to be alone. Yeah, same. I'm like putting on my face serum and scrolling through TikToks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, especially when my daughter was younger. I was like, that's sometimes the only time you can have alone is in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they'll still knock, but still, you can at yes. least close the door. You got to try. <laughs> you got to try. You got to try. Yeah. And then my last question for you is, what do you want to be remembered for? I think I want to be remembered for someone who wasn't afraid to take a risk in having a brand that's based in Ayurveda that is fun. And just, I think 
being that person who also helps others, because I think that's just something that I wish I had growing up too. Like even when I first started out within like the fashion editorial space, I wish I could DM people and be like, Hey, how'd you get started? And like now, whenever people reach out to me and they're like, how did you become an editor? I was like, it was two years of like unpaid internships and like a lot, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like you just have to like, there's so many things that like, I wish I could have gotten wisdom about. And like, now I'm like, okay, I want to make sure whatever I can do to help others, I want to be able to do that. So I think definitely with Squigs too, I want to be, I think a brand and a founder who not only stands by their mission, but also figures out a way to give back. Like for me, giving back to mental health charity is just one part of the equation. I want to see what more I can do right now. I have no idea what it is, but I'm hoping as we continue to grow and I have the capital to do something, I want to do something more that's more impactful that actually like does something more than just giving a donation. Cause that's great. Don't get me wrong. But like, I want to be that person who actually like does something. If that makes sense. Yes. I, that makes yeah. <laughs> all the sense in the world impact. It's about impact. Yes. And I feel like this generation is very generous. I feel like we're living in this generous time of that. I really appreciate being mm-hmm. alive in this moment, you know, cause like I you said, too. 10 years ago, you couldn't do that. You can just like slide into someone's DMS and be like, Hey, can you mentor me? <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> that wasn't, that didn't really seem like the thing to do. So anyway, really excited to see where Squigs is going. You've built a thank beautiful you. brand right back at you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And yeah, I'm just excited. And thank you again for being here. Of course, like I said, so, so honored. I'll be cheering for you nonstop because you're absolutely crushing it. And I hope one day we can get to where you're at too. Cause like, honestly, you're like goals, absolute goals. So yeah, (laughs) very kind. Well, listen, I mean, we all see that in each other, right? So Mm -hmm. someone is looking at you right now and saying goals about the tricks, (laughs) you know, it's true. It's true. So thank you, Nikita. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. Remember to leave us a review on whatever platform you are listening from. Spread the word so we can impact and grow the community. If you are an entrepreneur looking for more real talk and resources, you can join my entrepreneurial newsletter from my personal website, sandralilavelasquez.com. But also visit nopalera.co to pick up your favorite self-care items for yourself and your loved ones join the Nopaleta mailing list to be the first to hear about new products, exclusive promos. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at nopaleta.co. Stay resilient.